Hello. This is prom queen Karen coming to you for my third video on floss tube. Um, I'm going to do several things today, uh, one of which is to show um, an FO that I finished, and um, as well as several of my whips. And um, also, um, I'm going to do that Know Your Stitcher uh, tag. Um, the first thing I want to show you today is um, my FO, which is Sleep Under the Stars by Hands On Designs. And um, I, this is number 11, so um, I just have one more to do, and then I'll be done with the whole series. I wanted to point something out to you that I put several initials right here. It says LLK. Those aren't my initials. Those were my doggie's initials. And unfortunately, um, I had, well, I adopted her about a year ago from a friend who um, moved back to the Midwest. And um, Lulu was an old dog already. She was 10, but, but she looked pretty good and she moved really well. And um, the last month or so, um, she was having issues and um, I kept thinking, oh, it's just that, you know, we need to switch foods or something like that. And um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I think she had some type of a tumor and I had made a vet appointment for her on Thursday afternoon. But unfortunately, on Wednesday evening, she passed away. So anyway, I wanted to commemorate her and that's kind of what, what I've done on this one. Um, the February um, one that I did several years ago, um, I completed that right before my little kitty died. Same type of deal. Um, older kitty had um, inherited her from my son. Um, you know, she started failing and declining. Of course, all of us pet owners don't, don't want to admit that it's happening, but it does. And so anyway, um, after she passed away, I put her initials on the February one. So, you know, this is kind of, um, you know, this series... As cute and as fun as it is, also holds some some sentiment to it for me. Um, let me show you a couple of my whips. Um, I showed this to you last video in my video number two. It's a rack or you know random act of kindness, and um, I haven't gotten too far um, along in it. It's one of the um, Prairie Schooler Santas. It's the one, let's see, let's see if I can show you on here. It's the one right here that has him next to the peppermint stick. And um, I had had it in Q snaps, and that just, that's not comfortable for me anymore. And so I finally took it out of the Q snaps, pinked the edges so that they won't ravel, and it's actually going much, much better in terms of stitching. I just have to convince myself to do it from time to time. So here, here it is again. So, you know, some, some projects are fun to stitch on and others, you know, sometimes kind of feel like work. Um, here's another um, whip that I've had for a couple years that I just fell in love with. I had seen it on Pinterest and then had looked it up. It's called Pink Lemonade and it's by Casey, oh boy, I know I'm not gonna say her name right. Um, Buana Gurio, I, I, knew, I knew I wouldn't say it right, but, but anyway, I just, I fell in love with it and went ahead and purchased um, all the, the materials for it. Unfortunately, I guess it's my understanding that, that Casey was having a lot of problems with people violating her copyright via Pinterest, and so she, she is no longer um, designing for Cross Stitch, and um, you know, to our loss, there's no doubt about that. And she had some really cute charts. She had like key lime pie and she had tacos and, and chocolate covered cherries and all kinds of different food things. And, and and the colors that she used were just really nice. And so, you know, that's that's to our loss. Maybe someday she'll come back. But this is this is so far, this is what I've started so far. And I don't think the yellow is really showing very well in the camera. It's a much, much prettier buttery yellow than, than it's showing here. But the pinks and the greens and and the kind of uh, almost dark pinks look so nice on this. And it's been a lot of fun to do. I just need to finish it up. 
but but I'm working on it. And it is 32 count, which stresses the old, these old eyes a little bit. Um, you know, my preference these days is more of you know 28 count, just because it's it's much easier for me to see. And even better, you know, I, the 25 Lug count Lugana, so much the better. Um, here is um, another UFO that I found. Um, you know, the things that you find sometimes when you go through your stash. Didn't realize I had so much of this complete. Here's the the chart. It's by Be Stitched Designs by Bev, and I don't believe she's in business anymore. But it's it, it's actually on a navy blue, and that's what I have done. Is I I got some navy blue, and it's the tag on it. Kind of interesting says gotta put the, the specs on here it says that it's a 22 count Vienna Navy and so I'm doing it over two so so it, it's it's good and big which I, I enjoy and um, I'll use some Krynic on it on those snowflakes to make it sparkle which is really kind of fun I just like the contrast I just thought it was so ooh, it's a bunch of cat hair on it too I really liked um, the contrast between the dark navy and then the white. I, I just thought it was, you know, just made me think of, of um, you know, the, the, whole, the silent night, holy night, as, as it says on it, which is really kind of fun. And, and, and it was just a shock to me when I, I found it one day. Um, it was, you know, pushed into something else that, that I, after I had packed and moved into this house. And, and so much of it was done, so I don't really even have that much more to go. You know, kind of serendipity, kind of fun. So that, those are my whips right there, current. Um, I have one, one more thing that I'll be starting before too much longer. This is going to be number 12 in that series of A Year in Chalk. And I just showed you the other one a minute ago, the the star, the star um, Sleep Under the Stars thing. And this is the, the Summer Don't Go, which shows the, the lightning bugs, which we don't have here in my town because it's, it's not humid enough here. You know, I know that when I was a kid, we used to live in Alabama and we had them there in places that have humidity tend to have them a lot more so than, than we do here. But, but anyway, um, that, that will be the end of the series for me. And it, it has been a very fun series. Oh, one of the things I forgot to say about that, that one that I kind of commemorated my, my little Lulu dog on, you know, kind of a humorous story, the sleep under the stars. At night, I would get up and let her outside, and um, then, then after that, we'd all go back to bed, and that was that. But the funny thing is, one night, it seemed like it was taking her an awful long time, and so I looked outside, and I realized that she was just lying on the patio, just looking up at the sky, and I, she was gazing at the stars, and I was just like, come on, come on, we, we need to have you get in here, because... I want to go back to bed, but but she just seemed like she was so comfortable out there, and and so this, this business of sleeping under the stars will always make me think about her, just a sweet sweet little doggy. Well, let me do the know your stitcher. Um, the first question is where do you live? I live in Bakersfield, California, and and uh, Bakersfield is about two hours north of Los Angeles. And so we, we have access to a lot of good things. You know, I can go down there and see a play, especially a matinee, and be home, you know, by, by 7 in the evening before dark. Um, it's just, it's kind of convenient for things like that. We also live about two hours from Sequoia National Park. So if, if I want to go up to the mountains, you know, that, that's right there. Um, we're a little over two hours from the beach. And so, um, you know, just kind of a good central location. Um, we're at the very southern end of the San Joaquin Valley, and the San Joaquin Valley starts up at Sacramento and then, then goes all the way down. I live in an area that has a lot of agriculture. You know, a lot of uh, your uh, fruits and vegetables are grown in this valley, as well as nuts like almonds and, and pistachios and so on, as well as cotton. Um, the other thing is this is a big oil and petroleum area too, and so, um, there's a tremendous amount of money that that's you know um, that goes through here just because of our our natural resources that we have. Um, the one negative thing about Bakersfield is the 
to me anyway, is that our air quality is very poor. And so, you know, because we're, it has to do with geography because we're at the southern end of the, the valley. We have mountains that surround us on, um, on our southern end. And unfortunately, the pollution gets stacked up again against those mountains and that's what we're breathing. So, you know, that's a negative. But there are a lot of really good things about this town. Um, I raised my kids here. It's, it's, it's a great, great little city, you know, where, where, um, you know, you feel pretty safe and, and, um, you know, the schools are good and, and so on. So, so we have, we have a lot to brag about. Also, one of the first things that I noticed when we moved here is this is the first place I've ever lived where I could write a check, um, for, in a restaurant, you know, it, it was just, they, they were like, oh, you're not going to stiff us. It's all fine. You know, so I just thought, oh my gosh, I'm not used to that. So anyway, that, that's where I live. Um, the next question is, what do you do? Well, um, I used to work. Um, I worked for 33 years for um, the superintendent of schools office. And um, I was a school counselor. I worked in, and I, I told you guys some of this the, in the first video. I, I worked with incarcerated youth. And so I, I worked a lot with, with kids who are at risk of dropping out or at risk of, of you know, offending in, in terms of, uh, the law and, and um, it was a it was a great experience and I'm really glad I did it but I'll tell you what this four years of retirement has been a lot of fun so I'm having a good time with it um, the third question is are you married um, no not anymore I was for almost 30 years and um, you know haven't been for quite some time um, I, I have two adult children. They both live uh, out of state. In fact, my son is out of the country. He's in Ontario, Canada, and he's hoping to get citizenship there. And then I have a daughter who lives in Dallas-Fort Worth area. She, she's a, what they call a CNA. She, she um, is in the healthcare system. And um, I have two fur babies now. You know, last week I had three because I hadn't had my little doggy Lulu. But, but um, I do have two kitty cats, and, and um, I think that's what I'm gonna stay with. I, I think um, that's a good fit for me and allows me to travel, excuse me, and be able to be on my way and not have quite the responsibility of, of owner, the ownership of a dog as, as much as I enjoy dogs. So anyway, um, my, my two kitties are rescue kitties. Um, they are totally in the house they're, they're not allowed to go out and um, it's been really fun I've had them for about a year and a half and they came together as a pair because they had bonded during um, their, their time at the foster and so I was willing to take them both one is a Siamese and she's kind of snooty and snippy but but there when, when she wants your attention she'll let you know and she likes to be petted and then the other one is just the most laid-back cat you'll ever find um, and, and her name is Gizmo and she she just she loves everybody and everything and she really liked Lulu my dog and so it's been kind of hard to see her try to search Lulu out she can't figure out what's happened so anyway um, what hobbies do I have besides stitching I'm a reader love to read um, I like cozy mysteries really well um, I'm one of those people that when I learned to read um, I never look back um, I used to hope that nobody would be sitting at the at the breakfast table when I was a little girl in hopes because if nobody was then I could sit there and read while I ate and, and um, my mom said that I always had a cat in the hat book underneath my arm um, you know go, going up to bed and then coming down from bed you know in that that year that I learned to read in first grade and, and that was the beginning of it all and I just I and the more I do it the more I want to do it and I also like reading newspapers. I'm one, one of those um, dinosaurs who still reads a, a physical newspaper. Um, sometimes magazines too, but for the most part, I, I like reading books. And I do like to listen to audible.com in the car. Um, my second hobby is that I am attending college for the seventh time. <laughs> um, I take a class every semester at our community college. Um, just just because I like to learn and um, I have taken um, like the history of rock and roll through the music department I've taken several um, 
classes in film studies where we'd see a full-length movie and then write about it. I've taken a lot of sociology and a lot of psychology ju just because I'm interested. Took a couple business classes. Um, I hope I can take classes until the day I die. I, I'm, just, I'm just one of those people who like school. Um, I, the, the third interest is um, I like movies really well and um, I've gotten to be quite the TV watcher which I wasn't able to do back in the day when I was working but, but now um, I'm doing a lot more of it. Um, my favorite music, I'm, I'm out of the late 60s, early 70s everybody and that means rock and roll as well as some of the softer stuff. You know, I, I do like um, you know, like Eagles and Carole King and Eric Clapton and, and all those folks. And, and um, I am a little late to get on the bandwagon, but I do live in Nashville West. That's what Bakersfield's um, alter ego is. And um, last couple years, I've gotten to where I like country. And that was a long time coming because I used to hate it. But, but now I like, um, I like a lot of the stuff. I listen to Blake Shelton and Tim McGraw. In fact, um, my um, one of my best friends and I have tickets later in the month to see, see Tim McGraw and Faith Hill here. And so we've seen them before and they, they do a really good good job. But, but like I said, I was really late in getting on, onto that scene because I, I just didn't think I liked country, but now I do, I guess. Um, I, what movies do I like? I like the current ones. Um, I just saw Glass Castle. That's the latest one I saw. Love that. Had read the book. Really, really good. Um, also um, saw Lion on um, Netflix. That was excellent. It dealt with adoption and just really, really good. And and then one I saw last year I really liked um, with, let's see who, can't remember offhand who was in it, but it was called Hell or High Water. It was kind of kind of like a, I don't know, like a, a mystery type of type of movie and it was really well done. Um, old movies that I like, I, I still like all those from the 70s, um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Sting, um, you know, just, just all those old time ones as well as like Gone with the Wind. Um, my favorite TV show, um, see a lot of Netflix, um, enjoy Orange is, Orange is the New Black, I'm all caught up on that. Um, I enjoy um, Grey's Anatomy, uh, Chicago Fire, and The Voice. I really, you know, because I like music, so The Voice is kind of a natural progression on that. Um, my favorite books, um, I love those Sue Grafton, you know, A is for Alibi, and I just I just finished one this week, you know, Y is for Yesterday. I've, I've read the whole series, and I, I truly enjoy those. Also, like the, the Cozy Mysteries by Sue um, Wittig Albert, and you know she does a lot of the ones that have to do with like the herb shop um, near Austin, Texas. Um, enjoy all the Jeanette Walls ones, you know Glass Castle and and Half Broke Horses and all those. Those are all really very good. And and then there's another author that I followed off and on through the years. Her name is Sue Allen Toth, and she wrote one about growing up in Ames, Iowa, which is where my mom was from. And so that that has some sentimental. Um, value to me and I really really enjoyed um, that one it was it was called um oh gosh now I'm blocking on the name but but the the follow-up to that was Ivy Ivy days which talks about her college and, and um I've also written a couple of her nonfiction she recently um, took care of her husband as, as he was um, declining from uh, Parkinson's disease and it, that one is um, there are no saints here and that, that was a really, really good one too. So I just like her writing, it's really good. Um, what word describes me? Probably, I have to say laid back and easy going. I, you know, a lot of things really don't bother me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those type B personalities. Um, you know, I, you know, I just kind of accept a lot of things. Um, although, and it takes a lot to get me angry, but if I do get angry, don't back me into a corner, but but basically I, I gotta say laid back because it just doesn't happen very often. Well, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I tend to have trouble um, uploading onto YouTube if they're very long, and I've gone almost 20 minutes into this thing. So I, I wanna wish you a good day, and I want to um, tell you to keep those needles flying because that's how we get the stitch and stuff done. 
Um, I hope to uh, do another YouTube probably in a couple or three weeks. That seems to work well for me. So have a good afternoon. Talk to you soon, Flosstube. Bye-bye.